am highly uncomfortable with the Colby Poirier Masvidal situation. Like, I'm not enjoying it from an outsider perspective in the least. I'd be curious if you guys, I mean, we all love drama, right? But there's something that's very real and very personal about that. And I'm also, I'm also a little unclear how this whole thing happens. So let me give it to you from my perspective. I'm in LA. I'm minding my own business. Stipe going to fight Cormier that night. Nate Diaz is returning. He's going to take on Pettis. I mean, it's this fun night, but I'm in the arena and Masvidal's already there. Masvidal's already in his seat. Now, Masvidal and Colby are very good friends. First time I ever saw Colby backstage at a UFC, he was with Masvidal. Masvidal's getting ready to weigh in. Colby's back, backing him up. They were training partners. They were roommates at one point. They're current teammates. I'm out here in Oregon. Colby wrestled for Oregon State University. Masvidal wanted to work on some wrestling. Colby put him on an airplane. They came out here. They roomed together. They trained up there with the Beavers. I mean, these are just personal things that I have seen and observed on my own. But Masvidal's already in the arena. Colby comes walking out. Well, when Colby walks out, it's not like most fighters where, okay, you just go take your seat. No, you stop what you're doing. The cameras come. The champ's walking in. He's got the belt over. It's a big deal when Colby comes in. So they make it a big deal, but because they made it a big deal, I'm not watching it. And something happens when he comes out, him and Masvidal get into it. And I remember the security coming over and Dana had to leave his post and go over and try to break everything up. And I remember seeing that from where I was sitting and going, no, whatever those guys are saying, is, it, it's, it's hello. How are you, my friend? Those guys are buddies. And then there was all sorts of tweets coming out and there was little captions of this and them having to be separate. And I'm going, everybody's got this wrong. Those, those are boys right there. There was, there was no heat on that. So we go on about our day and the next day comes and the next week comes and about a week after that, no, sure enough, those guys were getting into it. And I was a little bit confused as to over what? what that's, this is the part of the whole story. What am I missing here? What are you getting into it for? Now, Back up even further, it did appear that there was going to have to be some bickering and some gamesmanship and some back and forth between Colby and between Masvidal for who was going to get the mandate to be able to fight Kamara, right? If you'll remember, Masvidal had his big win over Askren. Colby then was coming up against Lawler, and it was largely believed one of those four one would step forward. Those were the two that won. And it looked like now they were going to have to have it out. Now, this didn't mean they were going to have to fight. This just meant they were going to have to do some politic and they're going to see each other. They're going to laugh about it. And then they're going to call Dana and say, hey, I want the shot. Okay, great. Well, at this point in time of this story, that was already decided. It was Colby versus Kamara. It was Madison Square Garden. It was the world championship. Oh, and about two hours later, guess what happens? Masvidal just gets his year made. Nate Diaz calls him out of which Masvidal quickly accepts. Okay, great. Colby's fighting for the title. Masvidal's got the biggest fight of his career. Everybody's happy, right? Well, n apparently not. Apparently not. So then things keep breaking bad between Colby and Masvidal. Now, I'm an outsider in this whole thing. And I'm observing it and going, okay, they're working. I don't know what the angle is. I don't know what the payoff is. But these two are hustling us through the media and giving us something to see. That's really what I thought. Now. Colby and I have a mutual friend, Clayton Jack. So I reached out to Clayton and I said, hey man, by the way, this Masvidal Colby stuff, this is a work, right? This is for some level of media attention. And he goes, man, I don't know what's going on there, but it, it's very real. He said, I don't even have the full story as to where these guys got off track, but no, there is no hustle in this. And I thought, okay, oh, Cal Jack's getting work too then. He can't see through it. Then you get to, and this was what maybe the biggest part of this whole story, where you really realized, okay, there's no elbow, elbow, wink, wink here. This is very real. You get to the post-fight press conference between Khabib and Poirier, and something gets asked of Poirier. Now, Poirier in this moment is going to do anything but work. He's going to do anything but pull a ruse or look to promote. Okay, he's vulnerable. He's beat up. He was defeated. His title was taken. He was in tears at times. I mean, this is about Poirier as raw and authentic as you're going to ever see him. And he cut a promo against Colby, and he said that was wrong what Colby did, and that Colby going after, you know, Masvidal wasn't right. And now all of a sudden, Poirier's in the mix. Now you've got 
this triangle going on. Oh, and by the way, these guys are teammates. They got to go to practice together every single day. Listen to the same coach, be under the same roof. When that's done, go into the same locker room. Change your clothes, shower, put your walk out into the same parking lot. I mean, this is a little bit weird. And it went as far as for Poirier to say when he was going to be in the gym that he was going to confront Colby, and then he would let the media know what happened. And it's like, okay, if you maniacs need to get into it, I'm on board. I don't even need this great storyline, though I appreciate it, but if you maniacs need to get into it, I'll do my part. I'll either show up in a nice suit, grab a microphone, and commentate it for everybody, or I'll sit back and push the button. But I'm in. Whatever my level of participation is, I'm in. However, as long as it isn't a sanctioned event, we do not need the baddest dudes in the world going and getting into some guerrilla warfare in the practice room, in a locker room, in a parking lot. And by the way, how does that look? Who's there to break you guys up? And now that it's two guys mad at Col does Colby get jumped? Is this Masvidal and Poirier against? I mean, how's this? Or then Colby's got to grab somebody. And now the whole team's fighting. I mean, it's just really awkward and it's really uncomfortable. And it really needs to stop. Quite frankly, it really needs to stop. And I don't know what the answer to that is. Does somebody have to leave the gym? I mean, it would appear that Colby's the odd man out if they're starting to gang up against him. I mean, if he's pissed everybody off and he's alienated himself, it would appear that maybe he has to go somewhere else. And he spoke about that, but that's not right for him. He packed up his whole life, left his family, left his friends, drove across the country, found a great gym that's working. He's got a championship, being offered championship fights at Madison Square Garden. I mean, he's got a good thing going. Poirier is in a great spot. Took him to a championship and championship fights. Masvidal is in a great spot. It is taking him to his biggest fight of his career, but possibly the biggest fight of all of 2019. We won't know that till after the fact, but there's a good prediction to believe this will be the biggest fight of 2019. So those guys are in a good spot doing good things and getting good results. I don't want to see any of them leave. I don't want to see this be a dust up for anyone. You know, I had one. I had one that was weird. And so here's what happened for me. Here, Nate Quarry was given, okay, we're all teammates at Team Quest. Matt Lindland is the number one ranked fighter in the world. When they come out of the rankings, 185 pounds, Matt was number one. I can't remember if Matt was still even in the UFC at the time that this happened, but Nate Quarry gets offered a world title fight against Rich Franklin, and we're all teammates. So we all thought, oh, man, how cool. What a great opportunity for Nate. Let's get Nate ready. Didn't really think anything more of it than that. But there is another element where when you are Matt Lindlin, you are ranked number one, and you own the gym, and one of your subordinates, if you would, lack of a better term, but one of your subordinates is given the opportunity that you, according to your own opinion, but also the rankings, believe you deserve. It made it weird. I didn't know this was going to be weird. I remember showing up for back, okay, we got one focus, we got to get Nate rated. We had a whole bunch of middleweights in the room. Henderson was in the room, Lindlin was in the room. Can't, I think Evan Tanner was there by that. To Chris Lieben and Ed Herman. We got a lot of middleweights that are going to get Nate ready. And then one day, it's time for Nate. And I, I was just absent of it. This drama was right here in front of me. I was 27 years old. I just didn't see it. I didn't get it. And then those guys go spar and all hell breaks loose. And whatever animosity both of them were having that they had never spoke about and we'd never sat down and talked about happened. So I'm just sharing with you that there can be some of these weird moments when you're in a very competitive field. And a lot of that's okay. But you also need to know that you are safe. I mean, this is a very rough business. You need to know where you're safe. You need to know when to flip the switch, when not to. When that barbaric killer instinct in you needs to come out. But also where it doesn't. Where you get to be protected. Where you're surrounded with people that are there with like minds to help you, and then as a good teammate, you're helping them. And a high tide rises all boats. And it, I feel uncomfortable with it, quite frankly. I've never really understood what started it. That is one thing that I've also missed. And we had Colby on a week ago. I asked him flat, flat out what, what exactly started it, because what appeared to be what obviously would have started it was their 
bickering in their back and forth trying to get Kamar Usman fight. That's not what it was. That's not what, so if it wasn't that, where did this come from? 